Well, welcome back. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by somebody who knew the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, like a few other people in the world. Priscilla Presley married Elvis in 1967. They were married for six years. She remained a constant in his life. Despite all the controversies, she remained loyal to him to the end. And Priscilla joins me now, live from Los Angeles. Welcome to you, Priscilla. Thank you. Thank you, Piers. Thank Priscilla, nice I was just here. imagining that the movie okay. is just <laughs> exhilarating and fantastic. I want to play a clip first and then come to you. I'm going to be 40 soon. And nobody's going to remember me. I need to get back to who I really am. And who are you, Oz? I'm making the most of this thing while I can. This can all be over in a flash. Priscilla, I found it unbelievably exciting to watch this, and I never knew Elvis Presley. You were married to Elvis Presley. What was it like for you to watch this movie, not least because there's a character, of course, playing you? Oh, well... <clears throat> I. I... To be honest with you, I was very nervous about it because it's Baz Luhrmann. And uh, as we all know, Baz, you know, has his own unique style, which is good. But I just didn't know how he was going to portray Elvis. And I was concerned, uh, very concerned. Um, Baz wanted myself and Jerry Schilling, who used to work for Elvis, to go to New York at the uh, Gala, Mets Gala, and also to go to Cannes Film Festival. And I hadn't seen the film yet, so I bowed out gracefully and said, there's no way I can see it because, obviously, I don't know anything about what you're doing. So he arranged a, a screening for Jerry and I at Warner Brothers. Uh, we didn't speak for, I guess, three-fourths of the movie. And uh, I bent over and said to Jerry, well, it looks like we're going to Cannes. <laughs> um, it was good. It was good, I have to say. I, I was... I was completely engrossed in it, as, as well as Jerry. Um, Boston, uh, Austin, Austin Butler did an amazing job. It, it was, I mean, he had Elvis down to a T, literally. He um, studied him for two years. You see, that's fascinating, because I, I just assumed he had him down to a T. Uh, you would know better than, than most, because Elvis is such a unique performer. People have tried to emulate him over the years, I think, with varying degrees of success. Do you think Austin Butler has got him better than anyone that's ever tried? Hands down. Mm. Better than anyone. Anyone. Um, my daughter was quite emotional when she saw it, as I, and went, my God, I, I, I mean, he has... He, he just... It was like watching Elvis. His movements, his smirk, his walk, his attitude, his temper. Mm. I mean, it was, it was like reincarnation. I mean, it was, it was beautifully done, beautifully. And Olivia de Jong plays you. Were, you. were you happy with that portrayal? Yes, I was. I mean, I never, we never talked. <clears throat> Baz did all the talking, of course. Um, but I, I thought she did a, a very nice job. She was sensitive to him, which I was always to him and his needs and what he was, you know, trying to do with his life and what he wanted out of his life. So I thought she did a very nice job. Elvis was, without a doubt, one of the most brilliant talents that the world of entertainment has ever seen. That's unarguable. He was also quite a controversial figure in many ways. Do you think he would have survived this weird cancel culture that we now have to endure? <sighs> wow, that's a good question. I think of that often. You know, what would Elvis think? What, what, he wouldn't believe what is going on right now to this country or to all over what's happening to this planet. Um, he was very concerned about our presidents, uh, who was ruling the country. Uh, he, um, and people would never believe that, but he was an avid reader mm -hmm. as well. And not just, um, you know, religious books, but also he was reading what was going on in the U.S. What would he have made, you think, of, of what is currently going on in the U.S.? I'm sorry? What would he have made, you think, of what is what currently going on in America? Oh, no, he, he wouldn't believe it. I mean, he, he truly... 
I, you know, I don't believe it. I don't think any of us believe what's going on right now. We've never been through anything like this, and it's pretty much global, but us as a country, <clears throat> it's baffling. It's truly baffling. I'm, for the first time, worried about my future, if I'm not only my children, my grandchildren as well. Um, very unpredictable, and Elvis would um, <clears throat> probably go to the president, <laughs> like he did with Nixon, yeah. uh, put his foot down and say, what's going on? <laughs> what is it that you find particularly uh, saddening or worrying? Oh, my gosh, the state that we're in. I mean... My gosh, I don't know what happened to freedom. I don't know if there is freedom here anymore. You know, no one says what side they're on, Republican or whatever you want to be. Um, being very careful what you say, how you say it. Uh, I think we're in a very dangerous time. We're at a strange stage, very. Priscilla, where even high-profile women are scared to say what they think a woman is. That's true. That's true. How sad is that? <clears throat> I mean, uh, it's... Uh, to watch this going on, being very young, uh, in the limelight, and um, knowing a lot of people who are in the limelight, uh, their fears uh, on what's going on, not, not that they're just in the limelight, but I think it's, it's spread quite a bit uh, in this country about where we're headed. Uh, and I often think, like you asked, you know, what Elvis would think. You know, what would he do? He, he, he just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't believe it. He was a die-hard American. He was America. Yeah. He, he loved this country. He loved it. But it seems so to me, it seems to me, Priscilla, there, there's, a, there's a kind of movement, not just in America, but I'll talk about America about this. There's a movement to try and trash everything that's come before. And that's why I was curious whether you felt Elvis, whether there would be a campaign to try and cancel him for, you know, inappropriate statements, inappropriate behaviour, whatever it may be, inappropriate lyrics. We've seen it time and again now with so many people. That's why I was curious what you felt, because it seemed to me he would fly in the face of so much of what this weird culture represents. Well, per the movie, if you saw, and you did see the movie, you know, a long time it was um, stated that Elvis, you know, uh, was um, a racist. He was not a racist. He's never been a racist. Elvis had friends, black friends, friends from all over. Um, he loved their music. He loved their style. Uh, he, he loved being around, you know, black musicians. I mean, that's Domino. When he was in Vegas, he was uh, in the lounge playing, and he would always we would always go and hang out with him. Mm. Sammy Davis Jr., the same thing, would always come into the dressing room. And, and he loved, loved being around blacks and being around anyone, actually. He was just not prejudiced in any way, so, and not racist in any way. So I don't know. You know, this is a very frightening time um, mm. for someone. I don't, it's almost like, you know, we're looking for something from everyone that we can somehow dispose them in some way. Yeah. And, and, and that's why it's so frightening right now. Yeah. Was Elvis the great love of your life? Yes, he was. He obviously, yeah. he obviously sang about love so many times. When you're on your own, perhaps, is there a one song that Elvis sang which resonates most with you? Oh, my gosh. You know, there's so many songs. Um, gosh, that's hard to pick. That's a, that's a hard question. That's the hardest one you've asked me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> gosh. What's I the one when you hear it come on the radio and, you, know, you think, and your heart flips a beat when you hear it? Well, I think it's me in, in Las Vegas watching him do the shows. And um, I think, you know, the songs that he sang that people were all drawn to, uh, and, and I think that, you know, all of us are attached to a song. There's so many with him. Um, I can't even, I can't even tell you. It's Now or Never. Probably it's Now or Never because I heard him sing that in, um, Germany, actually. Mm. And, and that was given to him through the record label of the company. And, uh, to watch him sing the song and try to reach the notes in perfection is what we, who he was looking for to perfect those notes because he, his tone, his 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 uh, pitch, was not as high uh, in in that particular song. So he would always 
try to reach it and mess up and then hit his leg and try it again and again and again. So watching him kind of rehearse and trying to get it right is, is, was an experience to watch. <laughs> I can imagine. Because he was, so, he do, was do a you, perfectionist. Do you, do you wish, Priscilla, in a way that, that you had, had, had never got divorced from Elvis? And do you think that his life would have been different if you'd stayed together? Um, gosh, um, to be honest, I think we were better not married. Um, we had a great relationship. Um, he would come over to my home at all hours of the night, talk. It could be 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Um, I would have my daughter, I'll wake my daughter up, be with us at some of that. My mother, the same thing, although Lisa had to go to school. Uh, he would come alone sometimes and sometimes bring Charlie Hodge, one of his guys that worked for him or someone else, and we would just sit and talk and he'd bring him books and he'd read books to me. Mm. Um, and he left me with quite a few books as well. But we see, everything just seemed to be more relaxed, more at home when the tension wasn't there. Now remember, I'm with Elvis Presley <clears throat> and um, watching the girls uh, running up to him, wanting kisses from him, running to the stage, uh, coming backstage. Uh, it's a, a, you know, it's, listen, being who he was and having all the women, you know, jump him. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I bet you're only half uh, kidding, actually. It was actually. an experience. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, just about. Um, anyway, <laughs> but no, it was it was um, it was an eye opener for me, and on on being married to probably one of the most famous musicians or singers in the world. I, I, I mean, love every, how... there isn't anyone that doesn't love Elvis. Right, and I love how affectionately you talk about him. You know, not many divorced spouses yeah. would talk with the kind of love and admiration that you have for him so many years, of course, after he sadly died. He was a great human being. He really was. And he tried so hard, you know, at what he did to be perfect. And in many, many ways, you know, he wanted a, a movie career, a good movie career. That was one of the problems, as we know. You saw the film that Elvis had him tied, I mean, that Colonel had him tied up with a five-year contract with Hal Wallace, of all people. You know, Hal Wallace... Um, did more cutesy movies, uh, Girls on the Beach, as we know, um, never really gave him the part that he longed for, yeah. the James Dean part. Uh, uh, that's really what he longed for. And but you know what, Priscilla? He had, he had one of the greatest careers that the world has ever seen in entertainment, and he was a true icon. And the movie is utterly fantastic. And I'm so glad you loved it as much as I did. Priscilla, I've got to leave it there, but I could talk to you all night. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.